Hey guys, so today I want to sit down and do a full review, as promised, of the Dyson Airwrap. And I'm going to try and keep this video as concise and um, efficient as possible because I could sit here for about an hour and talk you through it. But I bought the Dyson Airwrap about a month ago and I've been using it and testing it extensively. I'd say I've used it every single time I style my hair for the past month. And I wanted to make this video and wanted to kind of put a lot of effort into it and to show you actually what this tool can do because I personally, spoiler alert, it's gonna be a positive review. Um, I personally absolutely love this tool. I think it's brilliant. I think the technology is outstanding. However, I've seen a lot of videos online um, that are first impressions videos. So any styling tool, in my experience anyway, you have to perfect using it, you have to learn how to use it, especially because this is a whole new way of using a tool, you're not going to take it out of the box and style your hair perfectly the first time. Bit of background about me and the Dyson Airwrap, I first saw it um, when it first kind of debuted around Fashion Week, which is about a month before it came out, I was like wow, the technology is insane, then saw the price tag, as many of you will be like no, hell no, £400 for a styling tool, I don't need it. I've got loads already and they already do a really good job. That was my thinking, so I was not even interested in um, buying it at all. Fast forward a couple of weeks, my friend bought one and bought one round when she came to stay. She was like, you have to try this. So I tried it and the next day went out and bought one because I was that blown away with not only how it works and the technology, but also the way that it allowed me to style my hair, and this is kind of like jumping to the end review, but essentially for me, I've never been able to give myself like a proper blow dry at home, ever. Because I've got thick, really long hair, like it's not something that I find easy at all, like with a round brush and a hair dryer, partly because of the time and effort that it takes, like I could do the front, but in terms of like doing the back and the length of my arms, you see what I mean? Like if you're stretching out your arms, that's the end of my hair right there, it's just, hard work and also a real skill that I never actually learned. So um, the main reason that I love this product is that it allows you to get that kind of blow dried look at home. However, there are a few things that I've learned since having it, because I actually went to a Dyson event a couple of weeks ago, which is way after I'd bought it and I've been using it kind of daily. I've learned a few tips and tricks on how to use it because I didn't think you could get beach waves from it before either. And I've learned how to do that basically an all-in-one tool. It does everything. And I'm going to show you in this video, um, first of all, the kit, what you get. Second of all, I'm going to show you using the tools, but also um, time lapse of me actually from start to finish doing my entire hair with each of the um, head attachments and to show you the look that you get. Um, because it really is a massively versatile tool and I think a lot of the reviews that you see here on YouTube People are either using it wrong or they haven't properly learned how to use it And I think that's a real shame because the technology in this thing is it's really quite amazing So anyway, this is the box you get um, this old-fashioned box, which I actually personally really like the design But I don't like the color a lot of people are like this is outrageous. You wouldn't travel with this I don't think it's meant for traveling, I think it's meant for storing it because you essentially have like a nine piece kit and to give this to you without a box to store it in I think would be really annoying as well. So yes, this is not for travel, you would take them out of this to travel. It's heavy, but it is really useful for keeping everything organized and keeping everything clean, stopping it getting dusty. So this is the complete kit which is 450. The smooth one is 400 and the volume one is 400. In the smooth one you get the curlers and the dryer and then one of the straightening brushes and then in the volume one you get um, the other straightening brush but then in this one the only extra that you get, you obviously get both of the brushes but you get a round brush which for me I personally don't really use round brushes. As I was saying before, I'm not used to blow drying my hair, so I can't really use a round brush properly. And if you do and can use a round brush properly, I feel like you probably wouldn't necessarily want this tool because that's most of what it does for you. Anyway, um, it's a nice addition to have if you have the complete set and if you like using a round brush. Also, if you have a fringe, I think this kit would be really good with a round brush because you can really like straighten out the fringe. Um, so yeah, what do you get? You get the mini hairdryer, which if you're thinking about buying the Dyson hairdryer, you might want to think again and just get this because it's £100 more expensive, but you get like a mini version. It's not as powerful as the original, but this is a really good addition because you're supposed to use this tool with your hair like 80% dry. And if you don't have the time to wait for it to dry, it's good to be able to use that to kind of um, 
like dry it off quickly. Personally, what I use, I do is wash my hair and then like 45 minutes later after doing my makeup, getting changed, sorting out Rivers breakfast and stuff, I will then like use it and it takes me from start to finish around 12 minutes. That's the other thing I've heard. In some of the other reviews, they say it takes a really long time. You just have to practice. It took me like half an hour the first time I used it. And then once you get used to it, it's definitely much, much quicker. So that is the kit. You then obviously get the actual handset itself and this has the larger barreled curling wand on it um, and they just attach and um, unlock really really easily just like that um, so yeah this is the tool itself if you haven't seen any of the demos and like how it works it essentially styles your hair the same way that a blow dry would so it's using airflow but it's also using heat but it doesn't go to extreme heat so the maximum temperature this goes to is about 140 to 150 whereas your traditional heat styling tools i mean ghds go to about 185 i believe and then some of the other ones you can set up to like 220 which is super hot um so dyson's thinking behind this is that they're styling your hair but they're not damaging it which is really appealing as well if you are somebody who styles your hair all the time and you've noticed um, over time like how damaged your hair is becoming from heat styling It's also a really good option that allows you to style your hair But you're not causing as much damage So essentially the way it works with the color I think it's called the Coanda effect when you blast air Really quickly at something curved it will go round it and it will essentially like Wrap the air around instead of going past it and just carry on going so when you turn this on the airflow is actually coming out of these little slits here and it is going round and round and round the barrel which is what causes the magical like wrap your own hair around the barrel effect so the one thing that i think people find confusing as well is that there are two of these barrels um that come for each size of the curler and you essentially use one for one side of your hair and one for the other side of your hair because you want to be curling your hair away from your face as per usual with any curler. Um, you can use these upside down like this, like they do work the opposite way, but they don't quite do the curl right. And also this is quite a heavy device and I've got quite a lot of questions about this as well. It's not like massively heavy, but when you are holding it up like this, which I will show you in a minute because there's a way that I use it that does hold it up. Your arm does get tired. If you're just using it like normal, you don't even have to lift your arm. You're literally holding it like this. So it, it's not it's not a problem that it's a bit heavier than a curler, but um, just pre-warning you. So that's why they do give you the two heads so that you change them. You do one side and then you change it over and you do the other side. The way that I like to use these, the, the larger barrel for me is like a, a straightish blow dry. So it does give you some bounce and kind of movement and when you first curl it it look and when you first use it even it looks curly but actually that drops out especially on me i've got quite heavy hair so for me i use the bigger barrel for like a straighter looking blow dry i use the smaller barrels which are these ones which initially i was like whoa that would be way too crazy i use that for like a glamour kind of curl or wave um, and also I use this for the beachy wave, which I'll show you as well. And then the two different brush heads. I actually personally don't think you need both of these because they're based on your hair type. Um, and these work slightly differently to the curlers. So they send air, they use the same effect. So they blast the air through and they have like little vents. So depending which way you are brushing your hair, the air will come down and effectively like come out and smooth it down instead of just blasting air out of the front of the brush you can see like when you move these i don't know if you you guys will be able to see that but it essentially opens up a vent that then so you're blow drying straight as you would if you were using a brush like this to blow dry you would have the blow dryer like pointing downwards like that it just does it but you just don't need the hair dryer you do it all with the tool so like I would personally use um, the longer bristled one because I have like thicker hair, whereas if you have finer hair, these bristles are a little bit more um, flexible. They also have the protective um, bobbles on the end and they're also a little bit shorter. So um, I don't think you really need both of these and I probably wouldn't use both of these. I'd probably just use one. Um, so, and as you can see, I'll just attach the hairdryer and show it to you, it works very much the same way as the original Dyson. Like, you turn it on, put it the right way around might help. And you can see, like, it's not as powerful. That's the other thing I would say, when you're using this tool, I'm not gonna do it. 
when you're using this tool is to make sure your roots are really dry because that's the one thing like it doesn't it doesn't dry the roots as easily and you obviously don't want damp roots still because otherwise your style will fall out. Okay, so I'm first going to show you the bigger size of the curler and I have to say like the one thing that is slightly annoying is that you have to take fairly small sections. I would normally curl my hair in massive sections and for this you have to take quite a small sections. But essentially what you do is you hold onto the section of hair a couple of inches from the end. I think this is what a lot of people are doing wrong. They're putting the wand here and holding the end whereas it needs to be you need to like wrap the hair around the end first and then move up so i'm just going to show this to you you wrap it around the end let go and i kind of guide it up all the way up to the top you wait i wait for about anywhere between five and ten seconds depending how wet your hair is at that point then you do the cool shot which is the button on here it cools everything down and kind of sets the style. Then you turn it off. So make sure you turn it off before you pull it out. And then you pull it out and you have that perfect curl. And that looks mega curly, but trust me, this is gonna drop out. I'm gonna do three of each type of curl. These drop out into like the most beautiful kind of bouncy blow dry effect. So it really is like that easy. It grabs the end. Again, I like to guide the hair in. Because I've got long hair, you don't want it coming off the end. Wait until the hair's dry. And there you go. And I'm going to insert as well, whilst I'm just doing this, the start to finish um, of doing my whole hair with this. And as you can see, it really does give you like a mega bouncy blow dry, but it's also quick. I think this one takes me about 12 minutes to do it from start to finish. And then if you just work that out either with your fingers or with a brush, you can see, like in two seconds, how nice that is. And that drops a lot more as well. So then I'm just gonna change the head over to the smaller barrel and show you what this looks like. So as you can see there, the curl is quite a lot tighter. Bear in mind I'm filming this and I, I'm not sitting in front of a normal mirror so if I'm reaching for things in the wrong place that's why guys. <laughs> Normally it's much easier if you're sitting in front of your dressing table mirror doing this than if you are sitting in front of a camera setup. You are actually supposed to properly section your hair whilst you're doing this as well and I don't do that and I've never really had any problems. So it gives you that really beautiful kind of bouncy blow dry wave and I also think the other thing that puts some people or has put some people off using this product is that people aren't brushing it out so I have seen actually there's a I think it's a John Lewis ad where they're promoting it but the girl's curls in the finished picture aren't brushed out so she literally looks like Shirley Temple like she has like crazy 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 curls but actually also imagine that as well with styling product in it so it really does like you need to kind of treat it the same way as you would if you were curling your hair with anything else. It's not going to be like instantly broken up. You need to like break it up with your fingers. And you can see here like this is a little bit more of a curl. Whereas this is like this bit even is like the kind of bouncy blow dry look. And then what I'm going to do now is show you how you create the beachy waves. Which I actually didn't think you could do. But they did a demo with Larry King and he showed us how to do it. And I have since done it and it looks amazing. But essentially what you do is you take the skinnier barrel and you wrap it the same way that you would um, if you were using, sorry I've got quite long hair, if you were using a waving wand, you wrap it round, then turn it on. And probably for a little bit longer because everything is bunched together. And then turn it off and you get like the beachy wave kind of zigzag instead of like the full-on curl. So I'll just do a couple of sections to show you, but you'll be able to see the full effect. And at this point, I'm guessing a lot of people are like, well, I already have a curler that does that. But my point is that this can do it as well as the other stuff, which I think was the criticism as well from a lot of people saying like, I don't like kind of big, like Shirley Temple curls. It's all about how you use it and how you style it afterwards as well. Like I was saying, definitely with the product and brushing it out. It gives you very much more of like a beachy, casual look. And again, 
bit of texture spray and it's like that's my kind of day-to-day -day more relaxed curl and it also gives you that like a little bit more straighter at the ends a bit more casual looking so my hair is now looking crazy I get that but I'm gonna switch sides and just show you quickly the um, straightening brushes and how you would use these so essentially like you can just brush straight through it just smooths everything out. It's not as smooth as if you were using a straightener for sure because it's not that kind of clamping effect, but it does leave your hair really smooth. You're not having to put extreme heat on it. You can also use it the other way like this. So it's a little bit, it'll give you a little bit more of a lift and less of a flat look. And I'm sure gonna show you now the insert of me doing my hair from start to finish with this. And that took me around about five minutes from start to finish. So it's, it's really quick. If you're just like running out the door and you want to not look like a crazy person, it's like a little bit smoother than rough drying it, well a lot smoother than rough drying it, and it takes exactly the same amount of time for me. So it's really just like directing the direction of heat, and bear in mind like my roots probably should have been a little less um, wavy because it's dried and gotten wet like three times this morning. So it's like a nice addition. I definitely don't use this as much as the others. And then lastly, I want to show you the round brush quickly as well. Um, I think this is good, like if you've got um, a fringe or whatever, like I said in the beginning, it makes it a lot easier to style it. For me, I actually use this for my baby hairs that are growing back, which I lost big chunks of hair at the front of my hair after I'd had River. So you, and they're growing back now, they're about a couple of inches long, you can see them see like here and stuff, like big chunks of hair. What I like to do is just use this to kind of smooth those out and also give a bit of volume. So make them work for me instead of working against me. You can also use it at the end, kind of add a little bit of a bend. But personally, I don't really use this. The one thing I would say would be nicer with this, would it, for it to be a little less kind of bristly, like it, it doesn't feel expensive do you know what I mean like it feels like a, a cheaper round brush instead of like a premium one but it's just a basic round brush essentially so now I look like a crazy person with all kinds of crazy hair going on um, but essentially that is just giving you a little bit of a taster of what you can do with this tool because I really think you can create pretty much any style that I would want to do and it's so easy that's the other thing I'm quite good at curling my hair with a tong. Um, if you're not, I feel like once you've perfected this, yes, it does take practice because it's a weird fiddly thing to do, but it's quick, it's easy, and it looks great. The one criticism I would say with it is it doesn't necessarily last that well, but I don't know for me if that is just me because personally, if I have a blow dry, like a professional blow dry, if I sleep on it, it's gonna look crazy the next day and not necessarily if I put product in it or not. Because obviously if you put product in it, it does last longer, but if I put product in it and then sleep on it, the mess is worse the next day, if you get what I mean. But at the same time, neither did professional blow dry, so it's more about the means of styling than the actual tool itself, if you get what I mean. On the plus side, the one thing that I do find is that I can touch it up quite easily. So say if I have, to, this looks so crazy, I've got like all sorts of curls going on. But if I um, have styled my hair one way the day before, slept on it, it's looking a bit messy, I can just get the larger um, wand and just go over it and it just smooths everything out and looks fine. So like I do that on dry hair as well, even though you're not really supposed to use it on dry hair because um, when you use it on wet hair and dry it into a style, it, it does last for longer, but it does allow me to do that. And so it's a little bit flexible. I've loved learning new ways to use it. And I think the waving, for me, that was like a, this can do everything. Cause before one of my main downsides was that it couldn't beach wave. And when I learned that, I was like, this tool can do everything. It's brilliant. Um, so yeah, all in all, I think it's absolutely brilliant. The price point is definitely a downside. And for many people that will be the decision made because it is too expensive for them to buy, which is a shame because it is brilliant technology and it's a brilliant tool. I kind of wish they had marketed it at the kind of 250 pound mark where it is more in competition with like the GHD stylers and things like that and a little bit more accessible. However, if it is accessible for you and if it's something that you've been thinking about and you're on the fence on, please let me push you over the edge because it is brilliant. Like, and if you've seen some negative reviews online, take them with a pinch of salt, think about how much they've actually used it and how much they've learned to use it and kind of like built up the skill using it because this tool is brilliant, like it really is. And for me, 
it's my day-to-day -day tool and I can't imagine it not being a day-to-day -day tool for a very long time because it's just so much quicker, easier and less damaging for my hair than what I was doing previously. So um, I love it. It's definitely a massive, massive positive review from me. I just can't wait to see what Dyson do next because I mean, the hairdryer was good. This is amazing. Like what are they working on now? I want to like sneak into the labs and find out because um, wow, I'm just so impressed. That is it for this video. I'm hoping you found it useful and seeing the different ways you can use this tool. Um, I'll pop a link down below to the Dyson website um, and more information on it, on the technology and things like that, because it's really interesting. Um, I'll pop that below as well. And I will see you again very soon. Bye guys.